What is up beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So we're in the shop again today and we're not working on that. We may end up working on that in this video, but what we're actually working on today is this Sportster right here. This is John's bike and uh, John is a subscriber. He hit me up and uh, normally I don't do handlebar installs, but he had a wiring issue and I love wiring issues. So, uh, let me flip the camera around and show you what we got going on here. The bike is kind of torn down right now, and I haven't filmed that, but I'll show you where I'm at and what we have going on. John bought this bike wrecked. The twisted bars are right there, and there's the new bars that are going on it. On top of that, whoever had this bike before John wired in this switch to make the bike start because they couldn't sort out the handlebar wiring. So I went in and I cut out that. I just haven't pulled it all off the bike yet. We repaired the starter wiring and now we are repairing the handlebar wiring. And I have that all over there. So let's go over there and I'll show you what I've got going on. So John brought me a switch and uh, that switch wasn't working. So I purchased a set of aftermarket switches to put on here because Harley switches are really expensive. Well, the issue with aftermarket switches is the wiring doesn't always line up and these switches from Amazon uh, the wiring's nowhere near being right but they were cheap and I can make them work so what I'm having to do let me show you this flip the camera around and I'll try to show you the best I can what I've got going on I've got one half of this switch already wired and I have factory wiring diagram here I'll set that on the table so I can show you and I'm going to do my best to show you this, and then I'm going to throw you guys on the tripod, and we're going to kind of just time-lapse me going through these wires. So if you look right here, I've got this one right here, and I've already gone ahead and sorted this out. I had to get a different brake switch, because the brake switch that was sent with these did not work right. And um, basically... I'm having to go through the diagram, dropping stuff, I'm having to go through the diagram and to the switches themselves and find what wires go where, and then I'm having to run those to the Harley connector. Uh, these Amazon switches, they didn't even come with the right connectors, they came with like Honda style connectors on them. And uh, now I'm working on this half. I'm going to throw you guys on the tripod and show you what I have going on because I'm going to kind of need both hands to do that. So give me just one second and we're going to go further into this rabbit hole and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this look all good and professional when it's all said and done. Okay, so this is the right side switch. We already have the turn signal side done. Now what we're doing here is the power and start switch. So according to the diagram, we have a gray wire that brings power in to the start stop switch. So once you, so this switch here is actually a green one, not a gray on this, the wire. So when that switch flips, power on a factory switch would come out to a white and black. Well, what we have here is a dark green. And then from there, it would take the power over to the starter switch. So what I've done is I've combined those two wires together. So when you flip this on to energize that, the start-stop switch now has power to it. And then we're going to run another wire coming out of that because once that's energized, this will energize the coil just like it does on the factory wiring. So what I'm using here is the Dorman Builder Kits. I like these. They're really just decent components for building wiring. We're going to go in, crimp this wire. As I sling stuff everywhere, then we're going to take these shrink tubing, drop that on over that connection that we made. 
and then just apply some heat. You can use a heat gun, you can use a lighter, whatever you got. Just be careful not to melt the wires. Once this is all done, I'm going to encase all of these in shrink tubing together like the factory wires would be. So we've got our start-stop wired, and then, let's see here, power comes over, and then this red and white wire will come out, and that will be what will trigger our starter. So. That wiring there is together and done. Let's go ahead and close that up in some shrink tubing. So we're going to melt the first piece of shrink tubing. This is important to protect the wires when we pull them through the bars. Then we'll take a second piece and slightly just overlap, overlap it by maybe a quarter inch on that previous piece we just did and then seal it. And you're just going to do that all the way down till we have these wires sheathed the way we need them. Or if you have a if you have a roll of shrink tubing, you can just do it all at one time. I don't have that. I have this kit. So, on to the time lapse for you guys. So as you guys saw, there was a lot of bubbled wiring I had to sort out and then aftermarket parts that aren't quite right that I had to make work. But overall, we got the bike sorted out. There's still some issues with the bike, but let me flip the camera around and show you guys. So when this bike came into me, it had different handlebars on it that were completely bent. Um, none of the wiring on the bike was right. All the fuses were blown and nothing on this bike worked. There was a switch back here to start the bike. So now, let's see if it'll start, it's cold. Uh, choke. But as you see, it cranks from there. We've got horn, high beam, low beam. Everything functions now. Uh, I gave John this seat and uh, we got handlebars on there. The forward controls are bent. I don't know how well it comes to our camera, but this one is shifted back, as well as on the other side. This one is twisted forward, and I think that front rotor is warped because I've got a pulsation in the front brake, and it's got brand new pads on it. So I'm thinking there's an issue with that rotor. Overall, I'm super happy with the outcome of this bike, and John will be here soon to pick it up. If he wants to be on camera, I will put him on camera. And then after that, we're going to get into getting some work done on the shovel head. We're going to cut out those stupid bars today, as well as we're going to mount an oil tank on it. All right, guys, so John just left. They were awesome. They were happy with the bike. Sold his friend. He white glide front end while they were here. He's going to have me put that on a bike for him, so it's always cool. And uh, he brought me some banana bread. Looking forward to that later. So now, <laughs> let's get into the shovel head, right? I'm going to flip the camera around, show you what we will be doing today. Well, I, actually, before we flip the camera, we're going to be installing an oil tank. I have this gas box oil tank that I purchased from Lowbrow. And I've already done a little bit of a pre-fit. And in order to get that to fit, we've got to cut these bars out, which I've been wanting to cut out since the day I got this bike. So, let me show you what our task for today is. There's these two unsightly bars. Somebody told me they're called like torque bars. The idea is for bikes that make a bunch of power. This thing's going to make like 60 horsepower. We're chopping those things out because they're ugly and they totally kill the entire line here and here. So, I'm going to throw you guys on the tripod and we're going to get to getting that chopped out.
All right, guys, after several hours of cutting and grinding, I got all that cut out. I threw the oil tank on. Let me flip it around, show you guys where we're at. So, first of all, those stupid torque bars are gone on both sides. Much cleaner look, and that made room for this oil tank. Now, this oil tank, as you see, with it in place, does not reach that. I ordered a new casting. This thing's just some sheet metal. I'm going to chop that off, and the new casting's a lot more robust. I'll raise that up and weld that in, so that oil tank will be mounted. The oil tank I had had a cap that stuck out, and it just really killed the slim. Like, the whole point of this bike is a slim bike. You know, we got the ultra-slim front end going here. And I just want everything to be like real streamlined and tucked into the bike. So I need to cut my fender mount and actually move my fender forward a bit. Not going to do that today. I did a little bit of Black Friday shopping. I spent almost $3,000 on parts for that engine. So those will be in in the next few days. The pistons finally came in so I can get those to the machine shop so they can finish the cylinders the heads have been done and uh, then we can get this engine together this bike is almost there it's almost ready for paint still haven't picked a color i'm really happy with all the parts i ordered i will show those in a separate video and show what we're doing with the engine uh, let's flip this around give you guys one more look obviously i don't have the rear wheel on right now it's really coming along nice so we still need to pick a color. Comment below, what are you guys thinking for color? I'm kind of thinking maybe a green like that Jack would be really awesome. Or a really nice like candy red or something. Well guys, that effectively ends this video. I love each and every one of you. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Comment below, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And in the description box below, there's links to all of our social media as well as our company website, hotheadstalls.com where we make everything for horses, and we also make dog leashes and dog collars now, and there's a 5% off discount code in that description. I will see you all in the next one. I love you all. I'm out of here.